everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. I'm so excited about this living room makeover. I am starting with sort of more of the traditional farmhouse style, which I absolutely love, but I was ready for a little bit of a change. So we're gonna update some accessories and change a lot of things in this room to give it more of the modern farmhouse vibe. I always like to do a really good cleaning on the space and dust and vacuum and clean all the floors and everything before I get started. Started. You can also see here some of the before. I'm actually gonna leave quite a few of the accessories, obviously the couch as well. But we're gonna start here in the entryway and make over this space first. So this is the back porch. And I've had this table out here for at least two years. This would probably be the third year and I sealed it so it would be okay to be used outside. So it's actually still in really good shape. It just needs cleaned. So my whole goal for this living room makeover was to do it on a budget. So that is why I'm using this table that I already had. I'm gonna be shopping my home for items. That way I don't have to go out and purchase new. I also am gonna be using some thrift store finds and also DIYing some of the projects and accessories that you'll see throughout this makeover. All right, so there's step one, and I really wanted to keep this rug. I really love it. But when I moved the old table, please tell me how does this happen? There is like a pink stain on the rug back there. And I don't, I don't understand. How did that even get there? This is not like a table that we eat at or even set food on, well, the old one. I don't even know how it got underneath that bottom shelf like that. So now I gotta decide, do I pretend it's not there and just put a basket over it or do I get a new rug? What would you do? Is that gonna bother you for life knowing that there's a stain on your rug? Or do you just put a basket over it and say, oh, you can't see it, no one will know. So first up are my thrifted items. I did a whole video on all of these items and I'll link that up in the iCards if you wanna go watch it. I spent $20 on that whole lot and this mirror was only $10. It's huge, it's heavy. It didn't have the best finish on it and I really wanted a black metal mirror so we're gonna give it that look. So I cleaned it all up, spent forever and a day taping it off. Um, there's a lot of edges on this mirror, but it was worth it because I came in with some black chalk paint and then sealed it with a polycrylic and a matte finish, and it gave me that faux metal look that I was going for. I know this mirror would be high top dollar if I bought it brand new, probably $100. So I feel like I got a huge bargain for only $10 and a little bit of paint and some elbow grease to kind of bring this into the style I was wanting. So I loved the modern vibe of this mirror and now the black on the mirror matches the metal black on the legs. So we kind of have that cohesive feel going on. I'm also using some baskets that I already had but they didn't fit on that shelf with the handle. So I just snipped those off there and then they slid right into that shelf that was a little bit skinnier than my previous shelves. I also decided to opt for the budget friendly version and instead of buying a new rug to go underneath it, I'm just hiding that pink spot with a basket. And since I didn't have two baskets, I only had one basket. I brought over a few accessories and ended up landing on a smaller pillow. So it's much more decorative and eventually when I find a good bargain on some baskets that match, then I'll pick those up. But for now, you can't see the pink spot, so we are going with this look. And now for the top of this console table, I found this gorgeous lamp. I think it was only about $20. 
at Walmart, if you can believe that. I'll link it down below if you're interested in that too. And then just a plain white lampshade that I had on hand. And then next to that is a home sign that I found for 50% off at Hobby Lobby. The vase is one of my thrift store finds. I just took out the greenery that came with it. It didn't quite match the decor and added these fuzzy things. I'm not sure what they are, but we used them in my daughter's bedroom makeover and these were the extras. So I put those in there along with this candelabra, this black metal. It kind of looks like art, so I didn't put candlesticks in there. It just kind of all blended really nicely with that metal and black combination made for such a gorgeous look. So now it's time to kind of pull some of that modern farmhouse vibe into the rest of the room. So I'm starting here with these floating shelves. I made these years ago and I have a tutorial. If you want to check that out, I'll link that down below. So I'm just switching out decor that I had on here previously for some that flows better with this new modern vibe and mixing textures and colors, but keeping it all very neutral and uh, organic. So you can see a lot of greenery, some wood, and that metal to kind of combine, but still keeping with the family vibe of adding those family photos. And now we need to tackle the walls. So this area over here, I've never had anything because they butt up next to each other and make a corner. So that has always been blank. So for over there, I have these two hanging plants, uh, planters from Hobby Lobby. Actually, everything over here is from Hobby Lobby. The sign, um, this little wall planter and these sconces were all 50% off and these planters were 40% off in their spring. So I'm hoping that that kind of solves the problem of that corner. And then over here we have this small little space and you can see I have a Dollar Tree DIY that's been up there for like two years. I actually had two of them and we had to take one down for our security panel. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take that down and put up the, this guy right here and put some plants in it just to kind of give it a little life over there. The sign is gonna replace this sign and take those buckets down, put the sconces up. So I need to take all that down, speckle, touch up paint and hang up the new. All right, so I am going to remove this photo, which is another video I'll link down below. I handmade that. Definitely not getting rid of that. That is something I wanna keep, whether I revamp it or reuse it somewhere else. I like to keep those handmade items. I'm also gonna keep these buckets because again, you can always spray paint them and make them work for another space in the house. And I am all for repairing holes and things before we put up new. So what I'm doing is removing any of the anchors and the nails and the screws out of the wall and I'm absolutely going to spackle and touch up paint before I put up anything new. And if you're wondering what color paint is on our walls in the living room, it is called Southern Grown by Magnolia Home in a matte finish. I've fallen in love with their matte finish because it has like zero sheen to it. Our bedroom, we did arches, which is a dark, dark navy blue, and it looks like velvet. It is so pretty. Um, so we went ahead and did the mat here in the living room. Probably not a good idea in a kid's room or in a bathroom or in a kitchen because it's not very easily um, wipeable if you get something on it, but it wasn't a problem in our bedroom or in the living room. So we went with the mat in here. So now that my speckle is dry, I'm gonna touch up the walls. Then once my paint was completely dry, I took the time to just level out and mark where the placement of my sign was going to go. Beep, 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 beep. 
So here's a flub, <laughs> and this is why I measured both. So they have these D-ring hooks on the back, which is I love, and I put these on anything, pretty much. That's what I put in the entryway uh, mirror, but this one's seven and a quarter down, and this one is eight and a quarter down. So now I've got to take this one off and move it up or vice versa to the other one. You also have the option of hanging some picture wire in between those D-rings so you don't necessarily have to install those onto their own screws on the wall. However, your sign will kind of fold forward a little bit and I wanted mine to be flush up against the wall. So that's why I went ahead and moved those D-ring hooks down, measured on my wall, marked where my new screws and nails were gonna go and then went ahead and hung that. I always feel like I need to do a little bit of a happy dance whenever I install something and it is level. I mean, it's just such a good feeling. It's like you did it and you don't have to redo it. I think that's the best part. And then once that sign was hung, I used my level again to help me measure over and down for those new sconces. Now we're gonna move over to the little tiny wall that is next to the front door. It definitely was a space that I felt like needed something. So I removed that Dollar Tree DIY sign that I loved enough to keep up for a couple years. But it was time for a makeover, so I had this little planter. I liked the wood and the metal combo and just tucked a little bit of greenery and ferns into the inside there kind of made for a nice little modern piece and also a place to kind of add some of that greenery to give it life. All right, so I've kind of been dreading this, this corner up here. Um, our 100 year old house has nine foot ceilings and I'm not sure how I'm gonna get up there. So this could be interesting, but I have those two ceramic pots to hang from the ceiling and I just have some regular metal hooks that I'm gonna try and get in there. Cross your fingers. I don't fall, break something, make a mess. So this is definitely interesting. The only way I could get up into that corner without moving the entire couch, which I'm not sure I could even do by myself, was to stand on the back of the couch. So probably not the most safe thing, but I was able to get up there after a couple tries <laughs> and Got those new planters hung up into the ceiling with those screw in hooks and added some faux greenery. All right, that's stinking cute. But I do think I need to hang one a little bit lower. They're both hanging at the same height and that kind of bothers me. And I think this one needs to come down just a little bit. So I'm gonna go dig around for some string and try to get back up there again. Let me tell you, I got a good uh, ab workout jumping up and down off the back of the couch. So I finally ordered a side table price and oh my gosh. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, happy with that. So it's actually a set of two quote unquote nesting tables. Oh gosh, I hope this fits. I hope it's not too big. This is bigger than I thought. So because I am the way I am, I'm gonna build them first. <laughs> and then we'll see if they fit. If they don't fit, then maybe I'll find some place else to put them because they're actually pretty cool. So let's get to build them. All right, so here is the moment of truth. I went ahead and moved the old table out, cleaned it all up back there, 
to finally see if these new tables were going to fit in the space or not. So here is the old and then obviously I am going to give you a look at the new. Okay, now that is cute and it does fit. It's not too big. It's going to be kind of weird to get used to, but how cool is that? So now that I have those done, let's work on the coffee table. All right, so we're going to just hopefully make a really, really simple coffee table. Uh, hairpin style legs. I found these on Amazon. They were only like 20 bucks and I already had the wood, like I said, from a long time ago. So super cheap and quick, hopefully, coffee table. It'll match the new it tables. So how cute are those? I need to look, oh yes. They came with the screws too. So basically all I gotta do is screw these right on the bottom side of my big round wooden circle. So this coffee table turned out perfectly. I love that metal and wood combination, but now let's turn our focus to the rug. I love this rug, but it was more of the traditional farmhouse style and I was looking for something more modern. So I came across this rug on boutiquerugs.com and when I rolled it out and it arrived, it was like a magical harps playing. I knew it was the perfect finishing touch to this room. So this footage is from my Instagram and I'll link that down below. If you head over there, you'll see things like this before anybody else will. So this is us just clearing out the old rug and adding the new rug, of course, putting all of the furniture back, you know that whole song and dance, and then adding those finishing touches like new pillows, a throw, and a little centerpiece on the coffee table. So I did splurge on this rug, but it was definitely money well spent as it's beautiful. It really helps tie this whole room together and makes a statement. And I just love how it all came together. I'm so glad I could save so much money going to the thrift store, using things I already had and DIYing a lot of the projects in this room too. If you enjoy budget friendly DIYs and room makeovers, please subscribe so you can come back here and join me every single week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.